you're familiar with Paul Vixie. Of course. You've worked with him quite a bit, huh? Yeah, he jokes he spent six months in a well with me. <laughs> with a positive outcome. We fixed DNS. We fixed yeah. a big part of it, at yeah, least to the degree they can be. Yeah, that's good. So uh, he made a recent proposal, and uh, Matt, maybe you can tell us a little about it. Sure. Talk about it some more. So the idea behind the proposal is sort of a, a how do I say this? It's sort of a, a slow down measure to prevent new demotious domains from being mm -hmm. used immediately. And the proposal is any new domain that gets registered, um, you would have a centralized comments period. So, you know, you, you register a domain, notification of this new domain has been registered, goes out to everybody. It's not going to be allowed to be used until that this certain process occurs. And it's either going to be a 30, could be anywhere from like, you know, 30 minutes to an hour to a week. The, the, the time period is, is something that I think people are, would, would still be debating for a long mm -hmm. time. Uh, but the idea is if anybody can give reasons why this domain should not be able to be used, it would be you know, denied. But it also has that, that cool down period means that no one can use it in that time period. So anybody who's registering large numbers of domains and, and immediately using them and throwing them away will no mm -hmm. longer have this advantage. It, it basically puts a cork in that. Right. So it's, it's kind of interesting. Um, there's a few questions I still have around it. You know, are there any legitimate systems that use this sort of rapid registration of domains? And if so, how are they impacted by this? You yeah. know, one would assume that the vetting process would, would have, you know, people would be able to take a look at it and say, okay, this is allowed because we know this, this person who's re registering it and they are known to be good, et cetera. Mm -hmm. But um, I feel like there's, there's, there's always edge cases in a system like right. this where if you, if you throw a monkey wrench into the, the flow of things, it will have a bigger impact that maybe you haven't quite thought about yet. Right. I'm not saying he hasn't thought about it. I'm saying I don't know what it is yet, personally. Yeah. Well, I'm going to ask Jim's opinion on this because I think it was just a week or two ago, Jim, that you talked a little bit about one, the, the, a uh, domain name generator algorithm that uh, was, uh, what was it, using the uh, exchange rates as a... Uh, right, it was the using European it, Central it? Bank uh, euro exchange rates in their algorithm. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So uh, it sounds to me like this is really a proposal to try to put a deterrence against that sort of thing. That is, if there is a domain name generator, you would have to have some type of a way to predict what it's going to be so that you could get past that wait period before the domain name could be actually activated, in which case, hopefully somebody else has some knowledge of it and you'd be able to dissuade its, uh, its potential use in that, in that much malicious activity. So I don't know, do you have any thoughts on this, Dan? Yeah, um, you know, DNS is the DNS is the fundamental basis of reliability on the internet. Mm -hmm. If you don't have D, like no service on the internet can be more reliable or available than the DNS itself. So we have this infrastructure that basically allows services to become high availability, mm -hmm. and that has unfortunately included uh, actively malicious services. Mm -hmm. And when Paul says there's really not a, a legitimate use for a lot of these domains that have only been around for 30 seconds, he's probably right. Yeah. Now, third level domains, people are generating random third level domains all the time. Yes. Because there's all these interesting reasons why you want to have randomized or data contained inside of a DNS label. Mm -hmm. That has a bunch of legitimate stuff. Yeah. But second layer stuff? He's right. You know, when you have something where 99.99999% yeah. of uses are illegitimate, mm -hmm. you got to kind of look askance and say, hey, you know, maybe this is where we, we put some pressure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I couldn't, this is a terrible analogy, but uh, I can't help but think when I, when I read it, I was thinking, this is what has to happen when you go to buy a weapon. You know, you're going to buy a weapon and say, well, we, we want to make sure you're not mad and buying a weapon or having some malicious intent planning to rob a bank or something and buying a weapon. So, but DNS has, it's not a weapon, obviously, but it's, it's, it's a, a case it, that can be, it's a tool that can be used in, in nefarious ways. It's not a weapon. It is a societally provided resource. It's mm -hmm. something that a lot of legitimate organizations invest significantly in in order to provide useful service. The internet is a low friction on, high friction off system, mm -hmm. which is why it worked. A lot of other things, people forget, like this was not the first, the internet was not the first time we tried to create a global internet work. It was just the first time it was going to be uh, very inexpensive. Mm -hmm. Like think about how much money has gotten paid for like 
Amazon and Apple and Microsoft to have the domain names versus mm -hmm. like how much money they made for them, like you know, nano pennies on the dollar. Right. And that wasn't going to be the way for AOL or Minitel or all the pre-internets. But on this internet, it's very inexpensive to go on. You don't pay a gatekeeper tax. Mm -hmm. and, and that's really part of the heart of the success of this internet, mm -hmm. where things get to be a bit of a headache is low friction for good, honest providers is also low friction for fraudsters. Right. And so a, a real observation is that the fraudsters are trying to leverage the availability of the DNS because it is the most available thing available. Mm -hmm. They're leveraging that availability. They're using stolen funds to buy all these domain names. Mm -hmm. And uh, maybe, uh, maybe there's an argument that they don't necessarily have to work quite that quickly. That those who wish to defend themselves should be able to use the age of the domain. And in fact, the domain should take a little while to age into legitimacy. Right, right. Like any good liquor, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> Okay. That's so, right. Jack Daniel security. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully you don't have to wait 20 years for a... <laughs> I think they age it three years or four years or something. Anyway.